Hey there, Adam Thomas here, Sugar Shack Nation. Uh, this is our part two of installing our main line. What we're going to do is a maple sap transfer line from our street level here all the way down to our holding tank. So uh, our, our last video that you just watched, hopefully, is us putting up this, this metal line. And this is going to carry the weight of it. Um, and then, so the next part is to follow right underneath of that. And we're going to use this three-quarter inch maple line. Uh, it's kind of like a clearish blue. Uh, which it, I like to use and so if you have any issues along the way inside uh, If anything freezes up you can kind of maybe see it While it's there. So what we're going to do is uh, going back to that tension piece that I showed you before I'm going to put this tension piece. It's four three-quarter inch piece and it kind of just accordions down like that We're going to slip that right over our end of our our main line and it just kind of accordions down like that let me get that right onto here. And it comes right through it. So what we're going to do is just continue to pull that down. I'm going to leave probably two to three feet, something like that, uh, past my hook up there because I'm not sure how, what kind of connection I want to cut into this to get from here to the truck. And we're going to work on that later. But for right now, we're going to go up there. And I've got a carabiner, just a quick lock carabiner. Well, I'll be able to hook right over top of my, my post. Um, and then we're going to start just unwinding this and unrolling this right underneath of this line all the way down to the holding tank. So let's start here. Let's just get up here, carry this on up. All right, so that's just going to slip over there just like that for right now. And what that's going to allow me to do is just unroll this all the way down. Now this is a 300 foot roll. Uh, it's the smallest I could get locally. I think they sell them uh, smaller if you order them online or if you're close to a bigger um, uh, supplier. But this is where I could get, and I think it's going to work perfect. So I'm going to just roll this out all the way down. And since I'm rolling it, that tension guy, as you can see, that's not going anywhere because when I pull on that, that tension piece is holding that right where I want. If I just unroll this a little ways out here, So then what we're going to go do along after I get it all the way down, we're going to start going all the way around like this, and I'm just going to use zip ties. Now again, what we're doing here doesn't have the weight, so it's not going to be filled with sap all the time. So really it's just going to hold its own weight. That's why I'm just going to use a zip tie. Uh, otherwise, if you're running them in the woods, that you're using them, that they're always filled with sap, it's carrying a lot more weight. They sell little uh, metal ties that you use for concrete work and rebar, and those would probably be a little bit more heavier uh, duty than just some plastic zip ties. So, they finished that, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just hold this guy up here. Zip tie him on. That gives me a little bit, a little bit of movement if I wanna push some through up there to get that connection. And then I'll be able to make that connection a little bit tighter. So my plan is basically just going to be zip tying this, probably every foot, 16 inches or so, just like this, all the way down to the holding tank. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do it like that. And then we're going to come back and make our connections up here at the top. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to connect it into the holding tank for there. But for right now, um, I'm going to just unwind this all the way down and then come back and then just zip tie it all the way down so it's nice and tight um, and you don't want any sags along the way. So you just want to kind of come down every like foot or 16 inches and, and tie it off, whether you're using zip ties or whether you're using the, uh, the metal ties for rebar. So we'll take it from there. We'll check back with you here in a little bit and we'll uh, get the connections fitted a little bit later. All right, take care. Hey there, we're back now. We've got a main line up, as you can tell. Um, I was able to unroll it all the way down, just on the ground, all the way past our holding tank here. And then what I did is I walked myself back to each tree that I have my wire hooked to and just did a loose zip tie, just, and that got it up off the ground just a little bit. So then I came back down, down to the holding tank, 
cut off it past about at least five or six feet so I know I had plenty to work with. Then I slipped on my second tension grip that I showed you that we used in the beginning. Um, I have another one down here and slid it all the way up here to this tree here. As you can tell, it's sitting up there in my other second tension grip and it's hooked to the tree. Um, and that got me nice and tight there. And then I was able to walk back up to where you saw me start. And then I pulled that blue main line through my tension grip up there. And it's, it, it was able to kind of tighten up that line just enough. Uh, and then I just started making my way down, walking down every about 15 inches and using zip ties all the way down. And connected it all the way down here to the, to the, to the main tank. So it's nice and flat. Nice and uh, tight. Um, and then the connection at the top, so it dumps into the top of the tank. And what we used on the top of the tank is what we call a bulkhead fitting. Bulkhead fitting, basically a couple parts to it. Uh, one side has uh, female threads, and this is for a three-quarter inch. has a gasket on one side, and then it has a kind of like a lock ring on the other. So it sandwiches between that tank. Um, but then the inside, still on the inside, is also three-quarter uh, threaded also. So if this is sitting up there, I drill an inch and a half hole, put that through, and tighten this up. Then the fitting I use for the, for the, for the main line is a three-quarter inch uh, barbed fitting, and it's a 90-degree fitting, and it's got a, a male threaded. So then you just do Teflon tape, thread that into there, and that basically, in a sense, is what's sitting on the top of the tank. And then what I do is I heat up the main line, cut it to the length that you want, uh, heat up the main line, and it just pushes on as friction fit right there. So um, if you'd like to, I'll, go, I'll, show, I'll walk up there, walk up the ladder and show you that fitting so you kind of get an understanding of how it's dumping into this tank. So let me uh, go on, walk on up. Okay, so you can see up here at the top of the tank, you have your main six inch opening hole, which this also has, it's threaded. Uh, and you can get inside there. That spins open. And I didn't want to go into that, uh, so I made my separate hole back here at the back where I can get up to. Uh, this is the bulkhead fitting that I talked about, the 90 degree. And you can see that main line, how it just kind of rides that wire down, swoops down, and it's going to enter and just dump right into this tank. Um, and before I mentioned, I just used a turnbuckle for that wire. And that wire is not super tight. It's really just taking that little bit of weight just carrying that main line, as you can see, back to that pine. And then past the pine goes past the little sapling shed and on on and up to the road. So from here, um, we're going to walk up to the main road and put the fitting on for the, uh, for the front. And uh, we'll see you up there. All right, here we are back up the front. We have about two feet past our pole here. And so what we need to do is put a fitting on here that's going to get us to connect to the buckets in the back of the truck that are going to sit on the tailgate. And what I plan on having is like a, a quick connect hose from here to the buckets. And they're going to have these special connections so it'll be simple to hook it together um, instead of having this piece of pipe trying to get all the way to the tailgate. It's kind of rigid and I didn't want it just sitting over here when the plows come through and stuff like that. So um, we've got about two feet left over. Uh, and what we use for these quick connecting fittings is going to be this guy. This guy's already made up, but what I have is basically we're going to start with a barbed fitting with, a, again, a male thread. It's just a straight one. And then this kind of a quick connect fitting is going to just thread into it, which I already have one made up. Just put Teflon tape on it, thread it up. And then, so that's going to be the fitting we're going to put on there. The second fitting is also going to be the counterpart to it, which goes in into here. And they just, you pull these tabs back and they lock on. So I'll be able to kind of make a hose to the truck from here. But what we're going to do right now is go ahead and put this guy on here. I don't want to keep this open now. It's sealed off at the tank. Uh, we're up here. I don't want anything to get into this pipe. So what we're going to do is, what we use is just a little propane, little propane tank, little torch on it. And you just get it just a little bit soft with a little bit of heat. Now, if you don't have one of these, uh, they have battery operated uh, heat guns, you know, if you're out here, if you're close by in the sugar shack, you have an electric one, you can use an electric heat gun, you can use all sorts of things like that. Even if you wanted to, you could use your wife's hair dryer, but if you do, let me know how that works out for you. So 
Again, these aren't that expensive. They're, they're really useful, especially if you're in winter, if you're in New England. You can use them for a whole bunch of things. And what's nice about this pipe being rigid, I can heat this. It's got a curl to it, but I can just kind of run down the line, not get too close. You don't want to scorch it. Otherwise, you'll just burn right through it. But you can form it a little bit um, and straighten that out, and that might help. So I'm going to just heat this up a little bit and get that fitting on here. Just softened up and this fits in there just like that so with that said that's what we're looking for um, and then I'm, I can you throw a zip tie on here kind of hold that up and you can't see it on this post but I've already used my laser when my truck was up here earlier so I know I have a level line of where that tailgate is so uh, I know that if I'm below that, we're going to have just the amount of fall that I need. So, um, again, I can keep kind of forming this with the heat, but for right now, that's what we're looking for. Um, but this is still open, so what we're going to do is just seal that up just for temporary until we're ready once season comes. Got a little saran wrap thing here. That keeps anything out. Or anybody messing with it for now. So for right now... That's our main line, our transfer line going all the way down to the holding tank. So next video will be give you a uh, 2021 look at the brand new Sugar Shack that we have everything and all the improvements. We'll just do a quick walkthrough uh, when we start our first boil, all right? We'll see you then. Take care.